Hey everybody, welcome back to Inazuma Tech. I'm your host, Adrian Johnson, and this is part two of a previous series that I started on the first, the inaugural episode of Inazuma Tech called, Is Art School Right For You? And I want to continue this uh, topic. Uh, I started the first episode, the previous episode with, you know, the reasons uh, why you should go to art school if you decide that that's something you want to do. Uh, so definitely go back and check out that previous episode. But for right now, for this episode, I wanted to go through some of the um, possible reasons, just in, just in my mind, you know. And again, there are probably others, other reasons, you know, why that you can, you know, come across. But uh, here are some reasons why I think um, you may want to consider on the flip side in terms of going to art school. You know, what are some of the uh, pitfalls, you know, that you may encounter? So I got five reasons, uh, just like the previous episode, uh, five reasons why uh, art school may, may or may not be right for you. Uh, you decide. All right. And as always, like I suggested last episode as well, do your due diligence and find out if uh, an institution or online course is right for you. But be aware of these points here. So let's get into it. <clears throat> Number one, the Internet. Just quite frankly, the Internet. I mean, this is something that just cannot be understated. You know, um, in my own experience, uh, I went to the Art Institute of Atlanta uh, here in um, Georgia uh, when I was 19, back in 1999. Yes, that seems like a, a million years ago for perhaps some of our younger viewers, you know, but in 1999, the internet really wasn't as the internet is today, you know, while we had it and it wasn't just the speed, you know, of um, downloading or accessing information. It was also just the the resourcefulness you know, of the internet. I mean, it, it was very fresh. And, you know, um, when you're trying to uh, find out things about what you're looking to get into, such as, well, OK, well, how, how do I become a, a professional um, painter? You know, how do I become a, you know, a professional comic book artist? You know, what, what type of schools are available to me or, you know, just overall, how do I find out information about the craft? You know, um, in that regard, you probably would have had to go to an actual school or some type of course somewhere because the um the options were very very limited you know even at that day and time however today that is not the case any and everything that you can find that you want to find out about you know whatever you're doing you can find out at the drop of a hat you know, so, you know, the Internet has really equalized, you know, what was once kind of the purview of, you know, going to school and finding out certain things, uh, getting experience that way. Now you can find that out just pretty much instantly, just instantly. Number two, student loans, the dreaded student loans. I am still paying on my student loans and unfortunately I probably will be paying on them for quite some time as is the case with many people out there who are probably watching. Um, you know, it's kind of like you, ha you have you have to pay the price, <laughs> you know, you have to pay the price in order to get the thing that you want uh, to get, you know, this higher education, you know, it does cost. And, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to do it. And I think it's unfortunate that once you do graduate from art school, you're setting off on your new field of endeavor and you've already accrued this huge debt and you haven't even begun your career, your chosen career as of yet. And it's just, you know, that, that's one of the things that obviously is a huge uh, topic, a huge 
controversy that's going on, you know, um, across the nation, you know, right now. I mean, there's over a trillion dollars in debt and student debt, you know, at this point, you know, and um, it's something that you should consider uh, when you're going to higher education that you will have uh, student debt. You know, so you weigh that if it's something that still is right for you versus kind of like your future plans. So keep that in mind as well. Number three, and this kind of relates to number one in terms of the Internet. But number three is the availability and the proliferation of online tutorials and materials and programs, Um, you know, there's just all types of stuff, all types of tutorials, both, you know, um, things that you can pay for um, and things that are free. I mean, there have been certain things I found out how to do, you know, in Photoshop or certain techniques that I found out by looking it up on YouTube, you know, by simply going to YouTube and somebody has a video about it. Somebody has a YouTube tutorial about that very thing. Or if you're looking for something more specialized, you know, there are, uh, there's a, there's a plethora of online tutorials that you can really pay for and get something that's more catered to the very topic that you're looking to, um, to solve, you know, or looking to learn more about. And that's something that was not available, you know, even 15, 20 years ago. You know, um, I think probably it was in this infancy. I do recall getting um, some tutorials about digital painting and, you know, uh, a couple other things um, on CD. <laughs> you know, it wasn't you weren't able to download it. You know, those files would have been huge. But on CD, I was able to get some of those, you know, kind of like digital painting tutorials and things like that. But even those things were still in their infancy in terms of, well, how can I apply this and not like, you know, run out of, you know, memory on my computer, you know, but, you know, you you come forward to today and it's definitely something that is available at your fingertips. All you have to do is look it up and there are tons and tons and tons of tutorials and specialized courses, uh, both free and for pay. There are available for you um, online right now. And in regards to how that pertains to, you know, going on um, to art school, you know, if you have it available online to you and that's something that you can actually pay for, for a, a, a huge fraction of the cost, you know, that it would otherwise take going to an actual brick and mortar school or a, um, or an established online course, you know, which would you choose? You know, it's kind of a a no brainer to some regard, you know, but that's that's also something to consider, because in some ways having those specialized tutorials doesn't replace the quality instruction, the sustained instruction that you would get at an art school. But if it's something to where, you know, you're you're trying to pick up um, certain tools here and um, 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 how to, you know, accomplish, you know, certain tasks little by little, you know, you can accumulate that to a huge degree, you know, through online tutorials and so forth, you know, so keep that in mind when you're also thinking about, you know, art school also. Uh, Number four, uh, the availability of materials and actual programs that you would use in creating your artwork, you know, um, when, again, when I went to art school in 99, Photoshop, Illustrator, these are things that I had encountered for the first time when I went to art school. And they were also very prohibitively, prohibit, prohibitively, there we go, that's the word, prohibitive, prohibitively uh, priced that, you know, the average Joe, you know, the, the, the budding student like myself couldn't afford those. You know, we're talking about several thousand dollars, you know, to buy these programs, you know, back then. And, you know, when you're just starting out, you don't have it like that. 
you know. So going to art school, that was my first experience in using these types of programs. They're at the school, and sometimes if I had to work on something, even if it was something for outside of class, say I had to uh, color something um, digitally, or you know, there were other things that I wanted to do. Um, I didn't have the program at home, so I would have to stay late after school, you know, and work there in, in, the, in the computer lab. And you just did what you had to do. And, you know, there's something to that, you know, just, you know, sitting there and, you know, using the stuff in the lab. For one, it's free since you're a student. But two, you know, you, you can pick up tricks from other people and everything. So there is that. But nowadays, you know, those programs, you can rent them, you know, by the month as cheap as $10 a month, you know, from Adobe or what have you, you know, through the uh, Adobe uh, Creative Cloud. So, you know, having the availability, the availability of those programs at home, you know, really just completely levels out the, 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 the field in terms of, you know, now everyone can have access to those programs what was once just the um just the uh, purview of you actually having to go to art school or say you worked in an art agency or what have you that was able to afford those programs so just the availability of having those programs at your fingertips and being able to now everyone being able to have them really evens everything out and, you know, just lets everything, you know, uh, be at your fingertips. So that's number four. Uh, number five. Here's here's a question. And don't don't castigate me for this. But this is actually something that, you know, uh, has been an age old question you know, just in regards to, you know, getting a, a job in the creative field. <clears throat> Do you need a degree? OK, so you go through four years or four or more years of higher education. You come out on the other side with your bachelor's or or your master's or, or whatever level that you're seeking to attain in terms of your education. And you're out there. You're ready. You're out there in the real world. Now you got your certificate in hand. You got all this knowledge and everything and nothing. <laughs> no job. You're, you're, you're going to interviews, you're sending out resumes, you got your portfolio site up and nothing, you know, and that's a reality that unfortunately a lot of people are facing, uh, especially new graduates that are getting out here in the workforce. You know, every year there's a new crop of graduates coming out of art schools and so forth and finding that it is very difficult to get work in their field you know if you're trying to um say you're trying to get work at an agency or um something to where it's not freelance you know that's the whole other thing but if you're trying to get a job that is salaried and that you know you um that may require a degree and you're going out for that job consider that there are probably 20 or 30 other people if that also going out for that job who also have degrees, you know, um, and then another point to consider is also, and this is what I mean by it being an age old question, you know, do you really need a degree if your art is good enough to get the job? If you're able to, <clears throat> like, say you have a portfolio site or you have a dedicated website to showing your work and on your site, you obviously have examples of what you can do. Or you're posting on social media, hey, this is what I'm doing, you know, so in actual time, people are seeing what you're doing, you know, so you did. So you're not a fluke, obviously, you know, so that's something to consider. Do you need a degree if your art, if you if you have uh, demonstrated that your artwork is good enough or great great enough to get the work and to do the work at that same professional quality because there are many times where people will get hired in particular freelancers and that's what I was mentioning before about freelancing being a different situation you know there are many freelancers that get hired based off of 
some um, employer or client or whomever, you know, coming across their work and saying, oh, wow, this is this is great. And often they're not asking if you went to art school. All they know is what they see on that portfolio site. That's all they see, you know. So whether or not you have a degree at that point kind of doesn't matter if you're able to do the work that is being presented to you or if you're presenting yourself, you know, to a prospective client as, hey, here is what I can do. Here is what I can do for you. And if you're able to uh, demonstrate that, then perhaps in that regard, you don't need a degree. And every day there are many, many jobs, you know, many gigs that are given to people Uh, to artists and creatives that don't have a degree, you know? So that's something else to consider also.